Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is my video on the Alienware Alpha R2. So this is our second generation Alpha. The first generation was a pretty decent device. It took the desktop experience, put it into a small form factor, but this year's version is quite a bit improved. Let's take a look. All right, inside the box, you get the Alpha itself, an Alienware keyboard and mouse, and the AC adapter. It starts at $600, but the configuration I have here is their top spec. It's running a quad-core Skylake i7, eight gigs of RAM, a terabyte of storage, and a desktop class GTX 960. And this configuration goes for $950. Just a quick word about the keyboard and the mouse. They're both okay, I wouldn't rely on them for competitive gameplay or anything, but they're good enough to kind of get you started on the system. The exterior of the Alpha hasn't changed. It looks pretty much like last year's Alpha or their Steam Machine. It's a black polycarbonate build with the Alienware triangle design up top. The shell is plastic, but it's densely packed and it feels pretty solid. There's two LED sections that you can customize. The alien head over here lights up and this little triangle area also lights up. Both of them are RGB and they're controlled by the Alienware software. It's pretty easy to customize the look. For ports, we have four USB 3s, two in the front, two in the back, an HDMI 2.0 in and out. So this lets you do pass through of other devices. It also has ethernet, optical audio out, and there's a USB 2 port underneath. So this is where you can put your dongle for a wireless mouse or a keyboard, but the Alpha has Bluetooth, so you may not even need to use this. Now it's missing analog audio jack, so if you need sound, and you probably do, you'll either have to use a USB headset or to use the jacks on the back of your display. Either way will work. The other thing it's missing is Thunderbolt 3. It bugged me at first because if you have a Thunderbolt 3 drive or a Thunderbolt 3 display, you can't use them. But if you're looking for an external graphics connection, you can still do it, but you're using the Alienware graphics amp. So the amp has been around for a while. It's essentially an external GPU that is cheaper and slightly better performing than the Razer Core right now, but it's a bit bigger and it only works with Alienware devices. But for $200, this thing gives you incredible upgrade potential and quote unquote future proofing if you wanna use that term. So if you wanna bump up performance to do 4K gaming, have your VR stuff, whatever you want, you can pop in any current Nvidia or AMD card and it'll get like 90 to 95% of that card's desktop performance. It's pretty close. Now keep in mind, you need to have the Alpha with the GTX 960 to connect to the amp. The base model with the AMD card can't do it. And the amplifier connects to the Alpha using this port on the left. It uses a six foot cable, so you can place the amp further away if you want. To get inside the Alpha, it's just four screws. You remove the cage and you get access to the two and a half inch drive bay. You can swap this one out for an SSD if you want, and you can flip it over, and there's actually room for a second storage drive. This is new for the second gen Alpha. It's an M2 PCIe slot, and it brings a lot of extra functionality to the Alpha. If you want to record gameplay, edit videos, or if you just want more storage space, Having a second internal drive is really nice. You also have access to the single channel RAM slot here. So I'm running eight gigs, but you can replace it with a 16 gig stick if you want. The CPU and GPU are soldered on and cannot be upgraded. The fans are pretty quiet when it's on idle. It's audible, but it won't bother you. At full tilt, it's not crazy loud, but you'll wanna have some speakers or headphones when you're using it. Thermally, it's well cooled. Those blower style fans do a good job. There's no throttling and nothing runs at uncomfortable temperatures. Gaming performance is good. Remember, it uses a desktop class GTX 960, not the 960M that we often see in laptops, but the legit desktop version. So lightweight titles run really easily on this. CSGO and Superhot won't even break a sweat on this thing at max graphics 1080p. Something a little heavier like Overwatch still runs really nicely on Ultra and even Epic graphics at 1080p. It'll maintain 60 frames per second or higher. And in general, moderately demanding 3D titles run really smooth. Now heavy titles, it depends on the game, but stuff like Far Cry and Witcher 3, you can run it at 60 frames per second at 1080p, but you'll need to drop down the graphics setting to around medium. VR on the built-in GTX 960 isn't really viable. The spec sheets don't lie, you do need a GTX 970 or better. If you connect to the Alienware graphics amp, performance is gonna be way better as long as you're running an appropriate card. It depends on the card you're putting in, but if you drop in a 970 or better, VR becomes super smooth. And if you drop a GTX 1080 in there, 4K gaming becomes a thing. So something else to note, this entire video was edited using Premiere on the Alpha. I recorded in 4K and editing this video was super smooth, even with only eight gigs of RAM. That second internal drive and of course the GTX 960 are really nice for video editing. 
The AC adapter is 180 watts. It's not too big, but if you plan on traveling back and forth with an alpha, maybe pick up a second adapter so you can leave one in both places. That way you don't have to bring the adapter with you. So if you spec it out right, the Alienware Alpha can be anything. It's simple enough to be someone's first PC. It can play games and even do VR if you're using the amp. It can also be a small media center for your living room. So you can just plug it up and start watching movies or you can download Hivemind from Alienware, which is like a media hub for all of your games and stuff. And you can customize it and you can launch all of the games and apps with a controller while you're sitting on the couch. That's kind of cool. You can also use it as a console-like gaming system. So if you connect a wireless controller, you basically have a console killer. And you can also run it as a portable work PC. So if you have two locations that have a monitor and a keyboard, so let's say work and home, or if you're a student, your dorm and your parents' house, it's super easy to transport this thing back and forth. And every time you plug it up, you're getting the full desktop experience. And that's really its strength. You get all the functionality of a desktop with a GTX 960 in a box the size of a Nintendo Wii. Now, it's not gonna be as cheap as building a mini ITX system, but the Alpha is way smaller and super easy to transport. So because of the portability and the strong performance of this thing, it's a very versatile device. You can play games on it, you can do work on it, you can edit videos on it. Basically, you have the strength of a desktop PC in a very small package. Now, having a super powerful computer that's also really small obviously isn't everyone's dream, but if you've been looking for a gaming laptop because you want portable performance, also take a look at the Alpha. It might be a good fit. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you liked it. Subs if you loved it. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.